the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank God for this day that he provided for us to assemble in his presence as we remember as we remember what he did many years ago. We thank Jesus Christ for allowing himself to rescue us to redeem us from the empty way of life that was handed down to us by our forefathers. This morning, we are going to listen to the word of God under a topic that says born in a manger. We shall take two readings as our key scriptures. We shall read other scriptures along the way as we proceed with the message. The first scripture is found in the book of Micah chapter number 5 verse 2. Micah chapter 5 verse 2 in NIV it says but you Bethlehem Ephrathah though you are small among the clans of Judah out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel whose origins are from of old from ancient times the second scripture Luke 2 1 to 7 Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. It reads as follows. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was, was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David he went there to register with Mary who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child while they were there the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn a son she wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the reading of your word, the sword of the spirit. Speak to us, Father, we are listening. In Jesus Christ's mighty name I pray, amen. Born in a manger. That is what Jesus Christ wants to speak wants us to speak about today. The coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, was foretold by the prophets long before he came. Micah gave a prophecy of the exact location where the Savior was to be born. Bethlehem Ephrata. Bethlehem Ephrata. But to our amazement, nothing special was prepared for him. I mean, nothing out of the ordinary was prepared to receive the king of kings. What we see is that as the time drew nearer for the fulfillment of the prophecy, Joseph and Mary went 
to Bethlehem. Maria le Josepha ba ile ba Bethlehem to register for the census that was called for by Caesar Augustus. Ba elo ngwadisha go ya ka go bala ga batho go boletswe ke Caesar. And it was while they were there. Ebe ka nako e ba leng mo that Jesus came to this earth. Or Jesus Christ at le mo le faseng. Jesus was born. Jesu o ile abelegwa. Born in a manger. Abelegwa mo le shakeng the lowliest of all the places one can think of le filolelo re le go fase ka maemo e motho ka bana gana ka lona what was the king doing in the manger go se ine di rang ka le shakeng it was prophesied long before he came go boletswe pele ka ba prophetsa pele ga ka fihla now what was he doing in a manger o ba a di rang ka mo le shakeng couldn't heaven reserve a room for him in the inn le go di monela ka se dire bleke e ka hono fa hore a tle a be gona na Jesus chose to be born in a manger a getha gore a belegelo le shakeng it was not a mistake ne se ka phosho it was not that heaven could not make something special a se gore le go di monela ba letse ke go dira se sengwe se se botse bo ena Jesu Jesus by himself Jesu ka bo ena he chose to be born in a manger o getse le go belegelo le shakeng and by this he was conveying or he is conveying a message to everyone every person ka se o utisha molaetsa go batho ka moka the manger is conveying a, a message to every one of us le shaka le o litlisha molaetsa go rena ka moka a message that says molaetsa o rene a person himself motho ka bo yena must position himself where many tend to despise o sanje a ipe le filong le lore batho ba le tsiela go fase the message says molaetsa o re a person must position himself motho o tshwanetse a ke pie where many tend to despise mo batho ba ba e lobellang fase god will be the one to lift him up modimo ke yena a tla mo phamishang and place him where he is meant to be a mmia mo a tshwanetse go ona in a place of glory mo le filong le le la tumisho Jesus was born in a manger Jesu o belege tsho ka ga la le shaka in a lowly place ka mo le filong la maemo a fase God lifted him modimo a mo phagamisha and placed him in a place of glory a mmia mo le filong le la khalalelo the glory that Jesus had khalalelo e Jesu Christ na na le yona had never been seen a sanga e bonwe in the life of human beings ma pilong a batho God lifted him from the manger. Mudimo o mo phagamishitse go tswa le shakeng and gave him the name that is far above all names. A mo fa lena le le gore le ka go dima ga maina ka moka. That at the mention of his name. Gore lena le o ga le bitshiwa. Every name must bow. Mangwe le ka moka a ubame. Though he was born in a manger. Le ge le o belegelo ka ra le shaka. At the mention of the name of Jesus. Ka go bitshiwa ga lena la Jesu. Every name must bow. Mangwe le ka moka a tla ubame. Every tongue must confess. Ma le me ka moka a tla bolela. That he is Lord. That ke gore ke morena. Ever since that time go thoma nakong ewo even today o fithaletse tshela le khono it will be that way go tloba jwa le go ya wile go ya wile it will not be removed e ka se tloswe for jesus did not lift himself up o bane jesus christ a zanga ke phagamishe he was lifted by the father o phagamishwe ke papa and whatever is done by the father se se dirilweng ke papa it cannot be demoted e ka se ke ya ishiwa fase when we are positioned by the father ge re beilwe ke modimo we cannot be demoted we remain there permanently but if we exalt ourselves self exaltation does not have enough strength or power to can maintain our position we need to be exalted by god it is a sad case children of god that many of us wants to lift ourselves up we no longer wait for god to do that we want to take every opportunity and lift ourselves up and position ourselves self 
exaltation does not have enough power. It does not have enough strength to keep an individual where he lifted himself. It is easy for that person to come down again the same way he went up. But that exaltation was made by God. The person will remain there forever and ever. He will be persecuted like Jesus Christ. But the glory cannot be removed. It will remain permanently. Let us go to Matthew 23, 12. Matthew chapter 23, verse 12. It reads as follows. Matthew chapter 23, verse 12 in NIV. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. These words were spoken by Jesus Christ himself. And it has never happened in history that Jesus can utter a statement which is incorrect. Us as human beings we can utter incorrect statements but not so with Jesus. He mentioned this statement many years ago and he sent me today to say go and tell my children that whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Therefore, Whoever chooses to humble himself must do so knowing that in due time he will be exalted. Whoever exalts himself must also do that knowing that he will be humbled. As to when, we don't know. One Sabbath when Jesus had gone to eat at the house of a prominent Pharisee, he noticed how the guests were picking places of honor at the table. And he told them a parable. I want us to read that parable. Luke 14. Luke chapter 14. Read verse 1 first. Then move to 7 up to 11. Luke chapter 14. Verse 1 in NIV. It reads as follows. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully washed. Verse 7 to 14, it says, when seven, he, 7 to 11. 7 to 11. When he noticed how the guests picked, guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor. For a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host will invite both of you will come and say to you, give this person your seat. Then, humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all the other guests. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. These are the words from Jesus Christ himself. As he, were work, as he was walking on this earth, he went to eat in the house of a prominent 
Pharisees. As he was sitting there watching, he noticed how the guests were picking places of honor. He addressed the matter right there and then in a form of a parable. For that is how he used to speak most of the time. And he is reminding all his children today that what he told this group is still happening today. And he said, look at the example of the manger and learn from him. Everybody, mang le mang, or almost everyone, in that banquet hall, mo neba bicho hona, was entering and picking up a seat of honor. Neba tse neba dula mo madulong amayemo. Everyone was invited. Kamo kaba to neba memiule in that banquet hall. Ona mo mketing o. Even us, when we are living in this life, we do not just wander inside the banquet hall. We are invited. Everyone who is inside the banquet hall came by invitation. No one just wandered in aimlessly. But we should wait patiently for the host to allocate seats by himself. If not, we will suffer humiliation when the host finally arrives and rearrange the seats, rearrange the guests, allocating each one to his seat. What Jesus said was that because we cannot stand inside the banquet hall waiting for the host to arrive. What we need to do is to pick the lowest place so that when the master, the host comes, he will say, friend, move from there. Go and sit over there. That way it will be exaltation. And there's nothing to bring humiliation to human being. But if I arrive inside the banquet hall, and I pick the place of honor. Somebody more distinguished than me might have been invited. And I, because of lack of knowledge, I will think I am the only one. Therefore, I will sit comfortably. The host will come and say, friend Merlin, please move from there. Go and sit over there. What will I do? Humiliated, I will move because I have no other way. The host is speaking. He is the owner of the banquet. I will move humiliated and sit at the place I never thought it was meant for me. But if I wait for him to come and say, friend, move to that seat, a more honored seat, I will walk without even looking down. Not with pride, of course. But I mean with lack of, without humiliation. And take that seat. And say, thank you, Master Jesus. Thank you, the owner of the banquet. Jesus chose to be born in a manger. A lowly place. 
knew that he was not a lowly person. He knew that he is not a lowly person. But what took him to the manger? He mentioned two things. Humbleness. And the love for people. This humbleness is starting from the one that I've already explained. He gave me only three points for this message. The one that I've already explained. The one of humbleness. Which is similar to what I've already explained. And the love for people. What took him there in a manger. Was his humbleness. What made him to be exalted by the Father was his humbleness and his love for people. Those are the two things that made the Father to exalt him and gave him the name that is above all names and gave him the glory that had never been seen in human history. Two things. Humbleness and love for people. That is very important. Let us go to Philippians 2, 5 to 11. Let us go to Philippians 2, 5 Verse 5 to 11 in NIV, it reads as follows. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equally with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Humbleness. This is a character that must be found in every person. Or let me rather say, it is a character that must be found in every child of God. Jesus was humble. Even though he knew who he was. He never allowed that knowledge to alter his nature. The nature that he is God or that he is the son of God. That knowledge did not alter his nature. He remained the same throughout his earthly ministry. Jesus Christ did not allow that nature to be altered. He allowed himself to be born through a person that he created. What manner of humbleness is that? How can a creator allow himself to be born through the created one? Jesus allowed himself to leave heaven and come and walk on the earth that he created. Jesus Christ 
allowed himself to take the form of a human being. Though he was not a human being, he allowed himself. That is humbleness. He allowed himself to be born in a despised place. The manger. Though he is the king of kings. Two things. Humbleness. And the love for people. Jesus wants us today as his children. That if we do not have these two characters. We need to start to develop them. Humbleness and the love for other people. Because of this too, I have already said, God exalted him and placed him in a place of glory. Even up to today, no one has that glory. That glory is with Jesus. And he wants us, his children, to learn from him. At the mention of his name, every knee bows. They like it or not. Evil spirits have to flee. They like it or not. At the mention of this name. That is the glory that the Father gave him. Every tongue confesses that Jesus is Lord. Even if at the present moment some tongues are not confessing, a day will come. Everyone will confess whether they like it or not. The glory that the Father gave him many years ago it will never be taken away. Whoever wants to be Exalted. Must humble himself. Whoever wants to be exalted by God. Must bring himself down. So that God can lift him up. And whoever is lifted by God. In that very position where he is. No one can bring him down. Is it where we work? Those positions that we find ourselves there. Yes, we have maybe been promoted by a human being. But the one who brought that exaltation is God himself. Even if the colleagues or whoever can fight you to bring you down. You will not come down. That position at your workplace or wherever in society or wherever it was initiated by God and he used human beings to come and lift you up. Therefore, no one can take it. But Jesus wants us 